Hey everybody, so in this video we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Rocky Mountain Radar C495. This is their top of the line radar detector. It includes both radar and laser scrambling. So what we're going to go ahead and do is take a look at its laser scrambling capabilities and see what it's actually doing, if anything, uh, once it's actually triggered by laser. And in order to actually do this, what we've got here is a couple different things. This right here is a custom Pro Laser 3. It is a police LiDAR gun, probably the most popular one that's used in the whole country, custom PL3. Right here, we've got a set of ALPs, the anti-laser priority. This is gonna be a dual head setup, and I'll show you in just a minute why we're using the two heads here. We've got the controller right there. This, of course, is gonna be our Rocky Mountain radar unit. This right here, is a really simple circuit that I put together that's actually going to help us see exactly what all of these different infrared LiDAR based units are doing. And basically all it is is you've got a little uh, LiDAR receiver right there, a little diode that's just going to measure all the different infrared light that's coming in and it's going to display it right here onto the iPad for us. So to go ahead and show you what that looks like, go ahead and uh, wake up our PL3 and uh, on this end here, you can see there's actually two lenses. You've got a transmitting lens and a receiving lens. So what we're going to do is point the transmitting lens directly here into this diode, and you're going to see the gun's pulse pattern displayed here on the iPad. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. There it is. And there you go. You can see the uh, regular pattern. This is a 200 pulses per second gun. And so you can see that pattern displayed right there on the iPad. Cool. And now what we're going to go ahead and do is take a look at uh, the output pattern of the ALPs. Let's go ahead and turn this on. So what we're going to do, the reason why we have two heads is uh, just to remove any chances of interference, I'm going to shoot one head off to the side and both of the heads are going to fire. The other head I'm going to take and actually place right there and so we're going to measure the output of that. So before we do that, you can see if I just do this. When I transmit, this uh, red light here is going to blink. And you can see right now nothing is going on here because I don't have anything actually hooked up to this diode. So what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to put uh, one head right there. And well, let's see, it might be easier to do this. So I'm going to take this head, uh, receiving, transmitting. I'm going to put the transmitter part right here over the diode. And then you're going to see when I transmit the, uh, the PL3. Let's make it all visible for you. We get it lined up just right, and you'll see there it is. Look at that huge output pattern coming out of the ALPs. Maybe lower it a little bit. I move it away, it goes away. Put it there, it comes back. If I can maximize the uh, output, there it is. So as you can see, huge output coming out of here out of the ALPs, like quite a bit stronger even the, than the gun itself. So that's what an actual jammer looks like. You can see it's really similar to the same pattern. So let's go ahead and turn this off. And uh, now we're gonna go ahead and pull up the Rocky Mountain radar unit. So to do this, let's go ahead and turn it on. Rocky Mountain radar. K band. K A band. Laser. and you'll see in just a second, scrambler on. So the laser scrambling is currently turned on. It does ship turned off by default, so you just go into the menus and you turn it on. So pretty simple there. Uh, to get familiar with the unit, control is here, display there, uh, but the main ones that we're interested in, you've got the laser receiver is right here, and then, I don't know if it'll show up on video, but uh, if you take a look right on there, there are three little infrared diodes that boom, 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 on the inside that are actually right there. Um, yeah, I can see them with my eye. I'm not sure if they're going to show up that well on camera, but uh, they are right here. Maybe they kind of are. You can see they're kind of purplish or so, but they're right here on this side. So what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, take this part and just put it right over the diode. So you can see, first of all, when we uh, shoot the unit... Laser. you can see that it definitely does alert to this PL3, which is good news. So what we're curious now is, uh, what does the output actually look like when this thing is scrambling? 
So what we're going to do is uh, shoot this gun and then put this, or shoot the detector, and then just put it right here on the receiving diode. And actually, so you can even see it a little bit better, see that it is going off. And that was just my uh, finger touching it. Okay, it's on this side, so. So as you can see, nothing. There is nothing actually coming out of uh, this unit at all. There's no power, there's no signals, there's no jamming signals, there's no scrambling, there's literally nothing that's coming out of this unit at all. If we shoot the PL3 into it, Lined up just right. There it is. Cool. So you can see there's the pulse pattern from uh, the PL3 itself. And it is kind of tricky to get uh, aligned just right. Let's do this. Might make it a little easier for me. Cool. So yeah, as you can see, the PL3 works just fine. The jammers, the actual jammers, of course, do work just fine. But uh, this thing doesn't really seem to produce anything when it comes to laser at all. And uh, according to the manual, it does. It does actually transmit asynchronous uh, pulses back to the jam or back to the LiDAR gun. But uh, yeah, it doesn't actually do anything. You can sit here and measure it all day long. And we'll just shoot the thing itself. Can I get anything at all? Only if I accidentally touch it like this, it'll do that. But. So yeah, as you can see, there's literally nothing coming out of this detector to do any sort of scrambling or jamming or alterations of any kind whatsoever to this gun. So the whole idea of this thing being able to stop laser, um, it's not doing anything. So how is it going to be able to stop it? So let's take another closer look at exactly what the Rocky Mountain Radar Manual has to say. It says that the laser scrambling operates using asynchronous pulse position modulation to confuse the LiDAR computer. Or maybe a lot of big fancy words to confuse the people who are reading it so they have no idea what's going on and just assume that, you know, well, science and magic voodoo, right? <laughs> if there's any sort of modulation or pulse pattern going on, just like in this TV remote here, you can see it. Not a big deal. If there's any sort of pulse pattern modulation going on here, you should be able to see it. You can't. After I read that, as you can tell, it does sound kind of confusing, so I decided just to give uh, Rocky Mountain Radar a call, and I spoke to a nice gentleman on the phone there. And so I asked him, can you clarify, you know, how your product works? And he said, well, you see there's actually two uh, laser receivers. You've got the rear one here, and you've got the front one right there. You've got uh, three laser scrambling LEDs right there. And there's also uh, two different radar horns right here. Now, the principle behind laser scrambling is unlike a laser jammer, which will detect when it's being shot and, very important, what it's being shot with, so it knows how to actually send back a custom jam pattern. Unlike that, this one is actually operating full time. It's always transmitting uh, pulses, the specific, you know, pulse position modulation. It's sending out these pulses that will confuse a laser gun. And the reason it will confuse it is because when uh, the laser gun is shooting, it's going to be seeing not only its own reflections coming back, but also the pulses coming from the Rocky Mountain radar unit. Okay. 
Interesting principle. A couple things wrong with that, but cool. Interesting principle. Interesting idea. I asked him, uh, you know, is when he explained uh, it's always transmitting, I thought that was kind of interesting because, like I said, jammers are only typically transmitting when they're being shot for a couple different reasons, really important reasons. And he said, well, if we waited until we were actually being shot, then there would actually be a punch through. The laser gun would be able to get a speed reading before we'd be able to return a, a scrambling signal. And, you know, kind of laughed. I thought that was funny because, you know, it's exactly what laser jammers do. They wait and boom, they send back jam. No problem. Now, thought about it a little more and it actually kind of makes sense. You see, laser guns send out a very tight beam. That's the reason that uh, if you know, a car ahead of you is getting shot, chances are you're not actually going to know it if you have a radar detector or a laser detector because you're not actually being shot. There's a very thin, tight beam, and uh, it typically only alerts the car that's actually being shot. Now, you can actually be the target and your radar detector will still not go off. The reason that's the case is if they're targeting your headlights or your front license plate or your grill, especially at closer range before that beam has a chance to spread out over a distance, when the beam is still really narrow, if they're targeting the bottom of your car, your radar detector on the windshield, there's a good chance it may not even alert. In fact, that happened to me today. I was out running with this and my uh, jammers went off. Jammers were installed on my grill. This, no alert. Actually really common for radar detectors. So, not a bad idea. If you're gonna be trying to implement some sort of jammer slash scrambler, from a windshield mount radar detector, transmitting full-time actually does make sense. So on that note, not a bad idea. Again, there are some issues doing that, uh, maybe beyond the scope of this video, kind of going in detail regarding how jammers work and uh, you know implementation and all, but coming back to this one, the principle is that uh, this thing, and the reason I wanted to bring up the story, was unlike a laser jammer, it's always transmitting. So I don't actually have to shoot it with a laser gun and make it go off. Um, it should always be going off. Now, uh, the laser scrambler, we can turn on and off. And actually, I think I might have turned it off, which would be kind of funny. Oh, no. Okay. So I did have a scrambler turned on, as you can see. So that would have been kind of embarrassing make the video and then, whoops, I didn't even have scrambling turned on. Oh, no. So as you can see, it is turned on. And uh, according to the engineer directly from Rocky Mountain Radar, has a good understanding of how this works. It is transmitting full time, so I don't have to shoot it to trigger it. There should be something going on.